Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Minister Cynthia Forbes. We invite you to tune in to the Tobago Inspirational Network for the message of hope. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I take this opportunity to welcome one and all to the message of hope. My God and my Father, the Word of God gives hope. God is a God of hope. You can trust Him. If right now you are in a situation that looks hopeless, my God, you can trust God for He is the God of hope. Today we want to look into the Word of God from Luke's Gospel or the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 13. But before we go there, I just want to pray for all of us. Father God, I give you praise and I give you thanks for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy, your love, your grace, your kindness and your faithfulness. I thank you, O God, for another opportunity to stand to declare your word. I pray, God and Father, you bless your word to those who would hear. Bless it to all our hearts today. Your word would minister grace, O God, to those who would hear. Some soul will come to be born into your eternal kingdom in the name of Jesus. Continue to touch lives, continue to save, heal, deliver, restore, revive, refresh, energize, excite, impart, oh God, your wisdom to us today, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I need your help, I need your grace, I need your strength, I need you to speak through me, to say what you would have me to say. Holy Spirit, take full control of us, oh God, those who work in this studio, those who would come to minister those who have gone before God. Let your word continue to resonate in the spirit of the hearers. I just give you praise and I give you thanks for what you're gonna do in Jesus' almighty name. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the opportunity. Hallelujah. This is the day of grace. Hallelujah. We are living in exciting times, especially for the believer. It is the day of grace and grace has come to you in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today is a good day to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. Let's go to the Word. The Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 13, reading from verse 1 to uh, about verse 5. I cannot go to the whole chapter. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them, Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, but except you repent, you shall likewise perish. And he went on to give a parable to bear out what he, was in, what he intended about repentance. Today, the topic is repentance, a necessity, not an option. Come on. Repentance is a necessity. It is not an option. It is not something you should just put off or cast aside as, it does, as if it doesn't relate to you. It relates to all of us. Hallelujah. It's a universal command. Hallelujah. Jesus spoke of it. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, the, the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ, John the Baptist, when he came on the scene, he said, he preached repentance. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Hallelujah. And it is a message that we should continue to preach today and stop watering down the gospel with, with nice words. Mankind is lost in sin and needs a savior. The world has sinned, hallelujah. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God and mankind needs to repent of his sins and turn from sin and turn to God. Listen, repentance is more than just feeling sorry for your sin, for your wrongdoing. 
hallelujah, it is more than just, there are thousands and hundreds and hundreds of people who have been, who have felt sorry for their sin and that it stops there. There's no change of behavior. There's no change of mind about their wrongdoing. They continue, continue and even go on to doing uh, 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 worse things than before. Come on, hallelujah. There is, there is a message of repentance. Jesus preached repentance, uh, hallelujah, when he came on the scene, hallelujah. He said, as, as John said, re repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. It is available. It is God's rule and God's reign in your life. Now mankind doesn't want God to rule and reign, doesn't want God to upset his life. But if God upsets your life, it is not for evil, it's not for bad, it is for good, it's for the better. Hallelujah. All God wants to give us is the best. Hallelujah. He has the best to give us. Hallelujah. It is absolutely necessary that you repent, hallelujah, in order to receive God's forgiveness, hallelujah, and to receive salvation, hallelujah. You cannot be saved, you cannot be forgiven if you do not repent, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, help us, help us, help us, help us, hallelujah. It is absolutely necessary. Repentance is more than just feeling sorry. It is a change of mind and behavior. The New Testament, uh, in, in the New Testament, it denotes a, a turning from sin, from your sinful activities. I had to repent. There were many times in my life when I heard the gospel being preached, fiery, fiery uh, gospel about sin and heaven and hell and I felt sorry for what I did but I didn't turn I did not turn hallelujah I, I, I put it off and I put it off and there are many of you who keep putting off your soul's salvation you keep putting off repentance hallelujah you keep putting it off for another time, a more appropriate time. Hallelujah. There's no more appropriate time than the now time that you are living, that you have breath in you. Hallelujah. Let's think of the Ethiopian aircraft that went down, that crashed, and all, everybody on board. Hallelujah. They died. Hallelujah. Many, I believe, some of them who believe us in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And we want to know, well, why? why these things happen bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people amen and as the scripture we just read here um it is not because they did something that was so wicked that was so bad no this we have natural disasters they are natural disasters and they are man-made disasters hallelujah our world is filled with man-made disasters hallelujah my God, my God, um, setting up all man manner of weapons of destruction, mankind, using the wisdom that God gave him, or gave him, yes, him, her, hallelujah, use it to produce weapons of mass destruction, hallelujah, to take out the world, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mankind needs to repent. We need to repent not only the sinner man but believers also. The child of God cannot continue in sin. Hallelujah. Turn. Hallelujah. And repent and turn from your sinful ways, your sinful activities. Those who have backslidden. Hallelujah. Not walking with the Lord anymore. Turn from your way. Turn from your wicked ways. Hallelujah. Turn back to God. Repent and turn away from your evil doings and turn to God. Hallelujah. Sin will be punished. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ took our sin, the sins of the world upon his shoulders. He bore it to the cross of Calvary. Yes, he did what he had to do for us. Now we have to acknowledge what he did. 
Hallelujah. We have to acknowledge what Christ did at the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. The work of redemption was complete at the cross of Calvary. And mankind now has to acknowledge his condition, his sinful condition before God. I mean, sin is not a pleasant word. Nobody likes to know that they are, they are, sin, they are sinners. Nobody. It's not a nice word. It's, it's not a pleasant word. <laughs> That's why God hates it, but loves the sinner. God hates sin, but he loves the sinner. It doesn't matter what, what, you, what you are doing right now. Listen, you cannot surprise God with what you are doing. And nobody could tell God anything about you. He knows everything is naked and open before the God with whom we have to do. Amen. Hallelujah. He knows, he knows, he knows, and he wants you to turn from your wicked ways, turn from your sinful ways, repent, and accept Jesus Christ, his son, whom he sent. Hallelujah. To seek and to save that which was lost, who take our place on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's go to the word. Bab is telling us here, there were at present, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He's on his way to where the cross will be elevated. He's going there. Hallelujah. And on his way, some, there were some people who told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Now, the, the Jews, God gave them the, the, that, that, that feast to celebrate, the feast of Pentecost. Oh, yes, they were to celebrate. And in, the, as I was going through this, I, I realized that some of them uh, go into the temple or wherever they went to do their sacrifices unto God. Hallelujah. And some of them probably were at loggerheads with, with Rome, you know, uh, with Pilate and Herod. They were at loggerheads and some of them decided they're not going to pay the, the Roman taxes and all of that. So Pilate would send his henchmen, hallelujah, to kill the Jews in the temple as they were doing their sacrifices. And so their blood was mingled with the blood of the animals that they offered up before God as their sacrifices. Pilate, the one who, who before whom Jesus stood. Pontius Pilate. He couldn't handle Jesus. Hallelujah. He couldn't handle Jesus. He told Jesus, don't you know I have power to release you <laughs> or to kill you? Ha! Jesus said, hey, you don't have any power over me except it was given to you from my father in heaven. No. Pilate couldn't handle Jesus. Amen. The Bible tells us that same day Herod and Pilate became friends. They became friends around that time. Hallelujah. So Pilate was very, very wicked. He was a wicked man. Very, very wicked. Hallelujah. He would kill the Jews when, when they were sacrificing. I, I, I found out that he would send his, his men, his murderers, dressed like ordinary people. So the, the Jews, very unsuspecting, think that people are coming into the temple to worship. And in the midst of their sacrifice, in the midst of their offering their sacrifices, yeah, the men would pull out their daggers and kill them. Hallelujah. And this is what these men, whoever they were, were telling Jesus, uh, probably they, he wanted to, they wanted a response. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? So they were thinking it had to be these people who were killed were uh, sinners. They did something wrong. And you know, we, sometimes we tend to uh, think misfortune that meets, comes upon people. We tend to think, oh no, the, is the, is the deeds they're paying for. We like to say that. They're paying for their deeds. Hallelujah. The Bible says all have sinned. All have sinned. Hallelujah. And Jesus answering them saying, you, do you, so you think that these people, these Galileans, were sinners above all other Galileans? Why such thing happened to them? What do you think about the Ethiopian? You think because they came from Africa? Hallelujah. They, we call it dark continent. Uh, it's because they were sinners above all at Ethiopians? No. Hallelujah. No. Jesus is answering them. Hello. 
If you don't repent somewhere down the line, you are going to perish. Repentance is necessary, not only for here, hallelujah, but for eternity. If you do not repent, hallelujah, man, woman, boy, girl, mom, dad, husband, wife, young man, young woman, if you do not repent, you are going to perish. And it doesn't mean um, a cow will bounce you down and you die like just, and that's it. No, that's not the end of it. Perish in eternity, in eternity. Those who died and uh, uh, were, uh, were Christians in that aircraft, they've gone to be with the Lord. As the Bible says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That is why it is necessary that you repent now because you do not know if your, your, your name would be the next one to be called. So you will be ready to meet the Lord. Hallelujah. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. This is what Jesus Christ was teaching them, was telling them. Don't think that they were sinners above the all Galileans. But if you who are standing here and telling me about this, if you don't repent, you too will perish. Amen. And so you who are listening to me, you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Hallelujah. In love. <laughs> it's not condemning you. Hallelujah. It's not to condemn. Hallelujah. But in love. In love for your soul. Your soul is important to God. He wants you saved. Jesus said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Acknowledge your condition before God. We cannot hide from God. He knows your condition. He knows my condition. He knows it all. And he wants you to be saved. He's not willing that you perish in eternity. Eternal separation from God, hallelujah. When, why would that, why would you allow that to happen? When God in his mercy and in his love, hallelujah, sent his darling, hallelujah, his only begotten son sent him here. And the Bible tells us, Jesus didn't think it robbery. He didn't say, I am going down, I'm not, uh, no, he didn't say, I'm not going now, they're too wicked. No, he, he, he gave himself willingly to go to the cross to die for us, for all, to give his life a ransom. You know what is a ransom? You know what is a ransom? Money paid for somebody that's been kidnapped. Hallelujah. And the price that was paid was not silver and gold. It is his life's blood. Hallelujah. Oh, Shortly, we are going to go over again. We're going to repeat the celebration of Easter. What does it do to you? Hallelujah. What does the preaching of the gospel do to you? Do you does it prick you at your heart? Does it make you think twice and think again and again of your condition before God? You are lost if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as personal Savior and Lord. You are lost. You are dead in your trespasses and in your sin. And God wants to save you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to give you eternal life. Hallelujah. He wants to have your name written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. That is why he's calling for you to repent. He came to call sinners to repentance. He didn't come for those who think they are righteous and don't need any, any, any God or any Jesus or any salvation. Hallelujah. But again, the Bible says, all have sinned. So there's none good, none that do it good. Amen. All have sinned. So all of us, all of us need salvation. All of us need to repent. All of us need to be forgiven. All of us need uh, eternal life. Come on. And listen, it is not that we are afraid huh, as such. And you better be afraid of hell. You better because the worms die not. And it is for eternity. Over a thousand years, over a million years, there is no end. If after a million years you could have come out from hell, then you have something to hope for. There's no hope in hell. There's no hope in hell. Hallelujah. There's no deliverance in hell. There's no salvation in hell. Here is where you make that decision to repent and accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Life is so fragile. Today we are here, tomorrow we are gone. 
Hallelujah. And gone where? Is at one of two places. Going to be with the Lord or going to be uh, in, in hell waiting for the judgment. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants you saved more than you because he knows the end. <laughs> he knows the end, what the end will be like. Torment. And think of the rich man and, and, and Lazarus. The rich man lifted up his eyes in hell. And listen, it's not that harm. You cannot be rich. Eh? He trusted in his riches. The Bible tells us he lifted up his eyes in hell, being in torments. So there is torment in hell. You wouldn't have no, no, no music, no, I don't even know the kinds of music they have today. You're not gonna get no jams, jam down there, no soca jam man, you name it, and Marshall Montano, and all those guys. If they don't repent, <laughs> and they go there, they have no time with no soca jam. They wouldn't have time for that. They would be in torment and wish they had done the right thing while they were on earth. Amen. I'm not against Marshall and whatever. I'm not t talking bad against him, but I'm saying all the Calypsonians and all those vulgarity and all those things that people do, huh? When you go to hell, you won't be doing them because you will be in heat. The fire will not be quenched. The, the rich man asked for, for water to touch his tongue. Hallelujah. Because he was tormented in the flames. All right? So there's fire. Amen. So then chap verse 2 says, um, or verse 3, uh, yes, Jesus says, no, it's not that they were sinners above all Galileans, but if you as an individual do not repent of your sins, hallelujah, sin is what to have the world as it is today, no crooked, lopsided, all the evil, portrayed by the wicked one, propagated by the wicked one, and those he used to carry out his work, dirty work, because of sin. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And verse 4, they are telling, uh, now Jesus is telling them of something else. They told Jesus about the, 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 the Galileans who, who's, who were murdered by Pilate. And now Jesus is saying, um, so what do you think? He's talking to them. So what do you think? You think the, 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 the 18 people on whom, on whom the tower fell, the tower of Siloam, what do you think? They were sinners above all the Jerusalem people? He was asking them back the question. What do you think? You think they were sinners above all the other people in Jerusalem? And Jesus says, no, we answer the question for them. No, no. When tornadoes strike in America and floods and earthquakes, hallelujah, and storms and hurricanes and floods, washing away homes and fire, burning up so many acres of land and destroying homes. What do you think? Because these people were sinners above all those people who live in the US of A? No. No, we have natural disasters, I said, and we have man-made disasters. Jesus is saying, no, if you do not repent, you too, you better repent now. Hallelujah. You don't want to spend eternity in hell. You better repent now. It is for your own sake, not for God's sake. Hallelujah, it's for your own sake. God commands every man. It's a universal command. Hallelujah. He commands all men to repent. Said in Acts 17, about 30, it says there, in the times of ignorance, God will, when you didn't know, you didn't know. God will, uh, he look at, he overlook your, he overlook your ignorance. When you didn't know, it's okay. He overlook you. Ignorance, but now you have no excuse. The gospel is being preached across the nations of the world, and you have no excuse. Times of ignorance, God winked at, but now He commands all men everywhere, hallelujah, to repent, turn away. It's, a, it's an inner, 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 inner movement. 
uh, 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 initiated by the Holy Spirit. Don't resist the Holy Spirit as he, as he ministers to you, hallelujah, about your life, about the way you live and how you ought to change. I know you want to change, but you don't know how to do it. Hallelujah. Ah, this is what you do. You bow your knees before God. Hallelujah. Humbly bow before God. Hallelujah. And talk it out with him. He says, come now. Let us reason together. He wants to reason. He wants to have a conversation with you. He wants to talk it out. He's not there with a big stick waiting to bop you over your head because he knows man was born in sin. But he wants you to come to him even now and confess your sins before him. Acknowledge your condition before him. Allow him to change you from the inside out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And will never be the same again. For the Bible says, if any man is in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. Hallelujah. New creation from the inside out. Hallelujah. It is so great. It, it comes down to it all it is the same thing as being born again. It is so great to be born again. You were born in your first family, your natural family. You maybe belong to the Woods or to the James family or to the King's family or to the George's family. That's your earthly family. Now you need to get into God's family. And to get into God's family, you must be born again. You must repent and turn from your sins, accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Hallelujah. His blood that was shed more than 2,000 years ago is still powerful. Hallelujah. To cleanse you. Hallelujah. It's still powerful to wash you clean. Hallelujah. Make you a new person in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not because other people are more sinful. There's no more sinful. We all have born, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Today is your day. Hallelujah. It is your day to bow your knees before your Father God in heaven. Hallelujah. Make him your personal God. Make him your personal Father. And ask him and confess your sin. Ask him to come in and make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. God bless you as you do that today for the honor and glory of God. Be viewing the message of hope every Wednesday afternoon at 5.30 p.m. God bless you. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Minister Cynthia Forbes. We invite you to tune in to the Tobago Inspirational Network for the message of hope.